Welcome to the inner world of filmmaking. I'm your host, Tammy McGarrow. I'm a writer, director, editor, and a podcast producer. In this show, I will interview filmmakers in all facets of production and distribution. In this episode, we explore the wild world of the talented Monique Impagliazzo. She has worked as an executive assistant, production manager, art department coordinator to writing, producing, and directing her first short film, Turkey's Done. Welcome, Monique. Happy to have you on the show today. Hi, how are you? Thanks so much for having me. So I just wanted to start with being a freelance filmmaker as yourself. There must be a lot of anxiety, you know, with in between jobs, like you work on a set for a couple of months or even a couple of weeks, and then it's over. And now you got to find work again. What are your thoughts on on that? You know, it's like the anxiety of the freelance life, you know, and I feel like we really don't talk about that all that much. You know, we, mm-hmm. we're we all like, work, 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 work. And we're like, oh my God, we're so excited. We're going to be able to actually like sleep and have like a, a typical, you know, uh, schedule and wrap. And then it's like over and the emails are gone. And then you're trying to figure out the next one. And everyone's like, what's next? And no one kind of talks about a little bit about the anxiety of, you know, of the what's next and, and the not knowing. And I saw something um, with John Hamm. He did something with set um, MD and it was just like, so interesting. He's like, you know, you're, we're, we're with these people for so long and, and then all of a sudden we're not, and we're on to something else or we're waiting for something else. You know, it's, and uh, you know, it, it's, it's something we, we go through each time. Right. And creating new family sets. Exactly. And some you're happy to get out of. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> and then others you just wish could go on forever. Yeah. You miss people. You know, you get so used. Like I, we had a great team um, in New York and a great, um, our, obviously our health and safety team was amazing. And then we had a great team um, production wise and we all were very close and it was just like, oh my God, we were, we're all together one day and then we're just not. Right. Um, but we're excited for each other because we get to go home and be with our families and things like that. So, But yeah, how did you get the project? Like, And what was it? This was a project I worked on called Leave the World Behind. It was a Netflix, It's a Netflix film that'll be out uh, starring Julia Roberts, Ethan Hawke, Mahershala Ali. And uh, on this one, I was uh, assisting running the health and safety team on this project. So it's, it's all very interesting, uh, still being involved, you know, in the film world while we're trying to make money to, you know, work on our own projects on our days off and things like that. And our, our nights, um, having like late night meetings, uh, for our own project. Like that's, that's what I, you know, I do because I'm trying to make money at the same time you know, work on my own project. So it comes with the territory, but yeah, it was a great project. And, um, you know, we had great crew, great team. And, uh, I, I had kind of falling into the health and safety aspect of it uh, a few years ago, like right after, you know, the return to work kind of came out, I was working on a project in Philly. It was, I was shooting a couple of music videos for M night Shyamalan's daughter, who was an amazing singer. And the company that we had hired had, you know, said, we need a couple of production people to kind of get involved. And it just kind of snowballed from there. So I've done some health and safety work um, in the meantime. But again, worked on some great projects with that and met some great people. And, you know, it's just great to be on set as much as possible. Right. And it's interesting that kind of in the film world, you could either be niche, you know, like I'm a producer and that's all I do. Right. But it's probably more advantageous to do a lot of different things so that you're, you have more opportunities. Absolutely. I mean, I started out as an intern uh, at a talent agency in Philly, like right coming out of college. And I also interned at a casting company too. So I, you know, had the background a little bit of the business of acting and how all that works. And I worked for uh, Marianne Claro. She's now since retired, but I'm still very close with her. And she took me under her wing very young. She saw that I was motivated and I wanted to learn. 
So, you know, from then I kind of saw like making these relationships in this business is a very, you know, important aspect of it. And I just, any job that I was taking to try and just be involved, you know, or learn and meet people any way that I could, because it's all about, unfortunately, sometimes who you know in this business, right? Especially when you're starting out. Right. So I would just always like hustle, do my best, you know, as much as I could try and be there for that person. And this business is very much about being easygoing because it's changing second to second, as you know, as a producer. Yep. You know, I learned that very early on to kind of just roll with the punches. From there, everything kind of, again, snowballed for me with just meeting people uh, throughout the business. Well, it's so important to network. Um, I had some questions for you later on about that, just how important yeah. that every production and as we go through your history of from project to project to project, uh, then we'll really talk about how important the networking was to bring you to those projects, I'm assuming. Yes. Yes. And the networking part, a lot of times people are like, oh, I mean, I am, you know, we're so exhausted sometimes, you know, from doing our jobs on set, right? And from working. And then it's like, oh, I have to network too. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) right. It's just, you know, this business is is funny in a way that we want to make films, we want to make content, we want to make TV commercials, whatever, documentaries, whatever you're interested in. Um, We want to tell stories, basically, is what it comes down to. And there's so many other things you need Mm -hmm. to learn along the way while working in this business. So that's that's something that really interests me, too, uh, that it's constantly changing. And I've learned over the years that you have to teach yourself things a lot of times and research and research and ask questions and talk to people. And, but it's scary at the same time because you're like, I've never done this before. You know, how do I, I, I don't know, but you know, you do your best, you learn and you talk to other people who have done it before, before you. And then you just, you just keep on doing it as much as you can. Right. And I think that um, there are a lot of great mentors yes. out there that when you're asking the questions, and I'm talking about like crew, crew members that can Absolutely. that will take you under. I've had a lot of people that go, oh, come on over. I'll show you how to do that. Or, oh my God, yeah, uh, ask me any question. I think, right. I hope we're going more in that direction than be afraid to ask. And it's like, how do you, you know, I'm not going to tell you that. Or like figure it out on your own. You know, and especially I think- in who, how you are as a person, what you're cultivating and bringing into you. I've, I've noticed, I've been on a lot of sets where it's like, wow, the respect people have for each other. It's so nice, you know? Uh, Yeah. And that's how you get phone numbers and keep in contact. Now, here's my question to you. You're working on (laughs) set, right? And you're connecting. I mean, who is your network is the people you're working on set with. Those are the people that are working, right? So, you get a phone Absolutely. number, yes. you try, how do you keep in touch when you're so busy to, ki- to keep on their radar? It's interesting, you know, I, you know, when I talk to those who are, you know, PAs or who are starting out and I just always tell them, make sure you look like you are working hard and you're involved, even if there's nothing to do. Think of something to do. Don't stand around. How can I help? Ask that question. What can I do for you? Even if it's a different crew member, maybe that's not exactly on production at the time and maybe they need something. Obviously, always let production know that if you're doing a different job on set. Right. But um, and sometimes it, you know, they have their own PAs. But hey, if someone's loading in at the end of the night or loading out, I'm sorry, loading out, you have a few extra minutes for whatever reason. You know, talk to the camera crew, you know, help them out. Just They'll remember that people remember like, wow, that, that girl's a hustler. That guy's really hustling. I see him work, working hard. Um, I see it, you know, all the time I had someone who was working under me and he knew everyone's name on the crew when they walked through the door and that was noticed. And he went on to do great things. And, it, you know, 
people take notice of things like that on set. So um, there's always something to do. There's always ways to stay in touch. I mean, yeah, I would ask, say, I would, I, I just ask people, Hey, love to stay in touch. Can I get your cell number? Can I send you an email? But I'm just a, like, as a reminder to reach out some, you know, maybe reach out once a month or if you're, you know, not on a job, Hey, I'm available. And that seems to work for me. You know, I still do that till this day. Hey, I'm coming off of this project. I'll be available in this day or you want to have lunch or something like that. Just making connections, you know, it's important. Right. And it's I, really important. I liked what you said about the PA stuff is like, really this business, you can't be passive. No, you just can't. You have to be um, active and initiating. And the good news is, is how can I help? Yeah. How can I help? Yes. That's all you have to say is how can I help? That's it. And stick around and work hard and help other people and go, you know, this is your opportunity to see what everybody does and what you would like to, you know, maybe uh, fine tune or go into that direction. You have to meet those people. Absolutely. If you want to work in art, talk to the dressers, you know, talk to the set deck any way you can help. Or, you know, at the end of the project, I'm looking to get into art. If you ever, you know, need an extra hand or if you need a runner, you know, let me know. Same thing, you know, with the with the certain departments. And I mean, as a PA, that's the time where you're doing all these different jobs on set, right? So you can see what the different departments are doing and seeing if you want to lean towards art, you want to go towards camera, maybe you want to be a grip. So it's a good time to, you're, you're on set, you're doing lockup sometimes or things like that. So it's a good time to kind of think about, hey, what do I want my future to look like? And who can I talk to to maybe take me to that next step? Right. Yeah. So, so let's, let's go back. So you're from South Philadelphia. Yes. Now live in Los Angeles. Um, you've worked on a variety of different projects and varying roles within them. And you spoke about Mary Ann Claro talent agency. What led you to the internship? I know you graduated and then you went, it was it an internship. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got there and what did you do? Yes. At the time I wanted to be an actress. So uh, but I also wanted to write and, and make films. So I studied f uh, filmmaking at Temple University where I got my BA. Uh, I wanted to go to NYU, but my mom and dad were like, no. <laughs> so <laughs> I stayed home. Too expensive or New uh, York? Yeah, both. Uh, <laughs> and so the deal was I stayed home, you know, commuted to Temple, which I loved. And I did study abroad in London for a semester. So that was the deal that I made with my parents. Wow. Yes. And so I studied communications and film and theater uh, when I was in London. But um, my junior or senior year, I can't remember. I think it was my senior year. I think my junior year, I did an internship for Mike Lemon Casting. And someone there said, oh, you're from South Philly. You need to talk to Mary Ann Claro. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I had no idea that she was like even in my neighborhood. Oh, wow. And so I called her off one day, made an appointment, um, started taking some acting classes. And in that meeting, we like, for some reason, really hit it off. It was just like, to her, she was like, I feel like I know you. I'm like, I feel like I know you. <laughs> she was very busy. She was like constantly answering the phone. And I, I at the end, I was just like, do you need like help? <laughs> I can come in and like answer phones for you. I mean, I'd never done it before, but I'm sure if you just show me, I could figure that out, you know? And she was like, uh, I was like, I would even intern and work for free if you would just, you know, teach me about this business. And she was like, well, I never had an intern before, but I know that I like you. So let's try this out. Uh huh. <laughs> so I just kind of went for it in that meeting. I think I was 21 at the time and scared, you know, you're just kind of yeah. starting out graduating from college. And, um, yeah, she took me under her wing. Then when I graduated, I, I worked for her. So that was, that was great. Um, no longer interned. I worked. <laughs> and, uh, oh, great. So that how turned, long did you work with her? I think I worked, I worked for her for a couple of years until I moved to New York. I, I always wanted to live in New York, obviously. And I did make the jump a few years later and she was so supportive. So, uh, but at the time, uh, she knew a producer by the name of Diane Kerman and who was producing a film in South Jersey. And I wanted to, of course, like be involved in any way and, 
And that's when I went on to standing ovation as, as an assistant. Started working with Diane and her husband, Stuart Raffle. He was the direct, he was and is a director. And that's how I met James Brolin on that film. Ah, there's a connection to Barbara. You know, I, it was my first time, was it my first time working on film? Yes. It was my work, first time working on a film and I just did anything that I could to basically help, assist, be flexible, uh, to learn. It paid off because Diane asked me to come to LA to finish with post because they did post here in LA. And um, I would come out, do some work. And I was kind of going back and forth at the time. And then finally she said, will you stay? And I said, yeah, I want to stay. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So we wound up doing post here and, and uh, yeah, it was a great time. It was a great experience. And I'm very thankful to Diane and Stuart uh, for taking me under their wing at the time. And uh, they're like my West Coast parents still to this day. I'm still very close with them. Wow. And uh, yeah, so after that ended, uh, I needed a job. And at the time, Jim just like, randomly sent me an email kind of saying that his wife was looking for an assistant. And I knew a lot about Barbara's, you know, directing and producing. And so I was like, okay, I was stunned. I I obviously never was an executive assistant before. (laughs) Right. Especially to a big celebrity. So, um, yeah. And obviously Diane put in a good word with Barbara and, and Jim and, and I went and met with her and started working. For How her. was that? It was, what, what was that like? Um, How is she? I was very nervous. Uh, to see yeah. the least. I tried to hide it, but it was funny. As soon as I met Barbara, then we started talking and we just got along really quickly. Uh, she was telling me what she needed from an assistant I said, okay. In the back of my head, I was like, I'm going to be teaching myself a lot. <laughs> right, right. So, um, so yeah, I met her on a Thursday afternoon and I started work on a Friday. So what, so talk us through what does an executive assistant to Barbara Streisand do? You know, um, it's at the time when I started working for Barbara, we were very busy, right? I mean, she still is very busy. Uh, we were, she was getting ready to shoot the guilt trip for Paramount, uh, finishing a CD, what matters most with the Bergmans. Uh, it was her birthday. Um, you know, she's invited to every event, every political event, um, under the sun. So it's a very busy schedule and you are working, not just with film, not just with music, not, you know, it's, it's a plethora of different topics every single day. Um, and it's changing, it's moving, it's quick. Uh, we did music tours, you know, where, you know, she sang, uh, domestically, internationally overseas. And it's, uh, it's a big multitask for sure. <laughs> so did you travel with her? Yes. So were you with her everywhere? So where she went, you went? Uh, a lot of times I was with her. She has a personal assistant who is always with her who's been with her for over 50 years, one of my good friends, Renaud Buser. Uh, so yeah, we were we were constantly uh, together. We did travel a lot. We did a lot of traveling back and forth from LA to New York uh, when she was promoting and things like that. So I was, I'm as, as her executive assist, assistant, excuse me, you're highly obviously involved in her schedule. So anywhere or anything that she was doing had to go through me to, to be put on the schedule. So, um, you have to be able to move quickly and right. If you don't know an answer, you better find it out pretty quickly. And, uh, yeah, it's, she's just like a genius basically. And she just like instinctively knows what's going to be amazing when it comes to her work. And and among among many other things. Mm -hmm. So um, one second we can be talking about a film. One second we're talking about a CD. One second, you know, we're we're just constantly moving from subject to subject. And how long did you work for her? 
A little over five years, I think it was. Wow. Okay, so um, you worked on the film Guilt Trip. Uh, What was your role on set there? Or were you just her executive? I actually, I, I, I actually, um, I, I went to the set a few times. I stayed back um, at the office because I had a lot of work to do at the time because we were finishing other things. But there were a few times that I did go to set to assist her if she had something big going on um, to be there uh, to help, you know, Renata and things like that. So what does, <laughs> what does a hourly schedule of an executive assistant, because I'm sure it's not just like nine to five. Um, It's probably, you know, are you working 15, 18 hour days with her or do you get any time off? Do you get a personal life? Yes, you do. You get, uh, I always typically worked, you know, Monday through Friday, unless we were traveling. Right. Um, so if we were, if we weren't traveling and we were here, you know, in LA, it was Monday through Friday. Um, and, you know, it was all different. It could be all different hours depending on the projects that we were working on. So it could, it, it would just vary, you know, day to day for sure. Yeah. Cause I was, I've heard about personal assistants and it just seems like you cannot, your life is, you're married to them. You know, there is no personal life outside of that. And I would think. It, yeah. It's, it's the job, you know, and you're, you're there and, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're there helping and getting things done. It's, it's you know, these aren't small projects. Um, these are significant projects. So um, I always just, you know, did my best to, you know, answer questions when needed and, you know, and, and to be available to get to get it done. Right. And I bet all that experience led you to being a really good producer because you have to have so many hats and handle so you're the whole thing. You have to make sure everything goes. So I'm sure this fast yes. pace, it's kind of like working with a writer or if you're writing every day, you become a better writer. I bet it's the same thing right. with her. You became a very efficient multitasker. <laughs> yes. Um, very detailed you know, I do my best to read over emails that I send, emails that are sent to me uh, a few times still from, you know, she taught me a lot of great uh, aspects to working. Uh, do you mind sharing some tips? Like what are, you know, uh, the one thing about Barbara and I still kind of, I, I remember it. She likes to work while we're, while we're driving. Um, because you, you're getting like two things done at once, right? right? You're moving and you're getting work done. And anytime I'm in the car, you know, I'm also trying to still answer emails, make phone calls, um, things like that. So it kind of, that kind of like stuck with me and I actually enjoy it myself too, <laughs> right? Now because of that. So yes, I, I check my work, um, Obviously, if PAs are working under me, you know, I always remind them, have you checked? Have you checked it? Have you double checked it before you're handing it? You know, even when I'm working under under someone now, um, I, I still try and do my best uh, to do the same, like use those same things that I've learned there through like my producing and, and my writing and directing for sure. Yeah. I mean, I was just thinking how energizing that must have been to work with somebody who's brilliant, who um, yes. does amazing things and works at yes. such a high level and high speed to really be able to have five years of absorbing all that information and the way that she's yeah. successful. Yes. It's unbelievable. Everything that she obviously has accomplished like over her career. And again, what always amazed me was that it's just not acting or, you know, it's many different aspects of this business that she has conquered basically. Yeah. And then you also went on tour with her. I mean, what yeah. was that like? And what, and what did you do? Were you more backstage or did you have to do anything with the productions? Yes, I was involved um, talking with like the crew and and uh, the tour manager and and Barbara's manager, Barbara's manager, assist, his assistant um, Tracy, who I worked very closely with, who I love till this day, and I got to meet a lot of great people who worked with Barbara, around Barbara, 
a lot of geniuses um, that I'm that I still have great relationships with. I you know mentioned Renata and there's so many Kim Skalecki. I mean the list goes on and on. Uh, there's just many people, but um, you know when I was there, I-, I loved being involved in that because it had a lot to do with production, right? And it was just like getting ready for the show every day was just always so exciting and dealing, you know, dealing with the script, my friend, Amy Shaughnessy, who was a script supervisor, still very close with her till this day. So, you know, there was changes from city to city and it was just constantly moving, constantly changing, like day to day. We were just on planes and, and moving to the next great city. And then the night of the show, I would greet the VIPs who were coming backstage and, you know, I would do that at the beginning of the show. And I'd always stay until obviously Barbara was on stage, um, kind of like on off to the side, make sure everything was okay. And then once I spoke with everyone, I kind of went backstage and continued with other work that I did. The nights of just like kind of watching the audience, like, made every day so amazing, um, to see the reaction. And, uh, it was, it was quite the experience for sure. Yeah. So, so you worked there for five years. What made you want to change and go on to something else? Um, I really missed production and and being on set and it was obviously a very, very hard decision. Um, I wanted to, you know, I had projects that I wanted to work on and with, some of my previous experience kind of still held those relationships and kept on getting calls to go back to Philly to work on some projects. And, um, I do love shooting in Philly. It's one of my favorite places to shoot. Um, obviously I'm a little biased cause I'm from there, Yeah, but, um, yeah, so it's a beautiful place. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. And, um, I hope to shoot more and more there. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Would you like to go back? I mean, would you want to go back to the East Coast permanently and then just visit LA? Uh, that's tough. I miss all my family and friends. I do. But way of life in LA and I feel like uh, work is here and, and, and those relationships that I've worked so hard. Um, I do love going back and forth because I feel like I get the best of both worlds. Um, but I've definitely fell in love with the West Coast. And my family and friends are not going to be happy here in that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is beautiful. I mean, it's a really beautiful place. Most people want to live here. So it's gorgeous. I love it. Yeah. What was a transition to? So you left and then where did you go to the history making productions? Was that the next step? Yes. I started working a lot more with Wendy Cox, um, a producer who I am still very good friends with too, till this day. And we, yeah, we, we started shooting in Philly, a couple of projects and it was just amazing. Like, you know, I got, you know, started as a, as production coordinator and went up to, you know, production manager and just really loved working with the crews there and shooting. And it was about Philly. And so for me, it was, you know, all encompassing. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, yeah. So how long were you there for? I was there, I feel like it was a few years we shot on and off different projects. I want to say maybe three or four years we shot different projects there. So did you did you stay there for a period of time or were you yes. computing back and forth? Yes, I would stay as long as like, you know, the project was going on and then we would take some time off. So I'd come back to LA and then we'd go back and shoot a few more episodes of The Great Experiment. So I was going back and forth and shooting different projects. And then I started getting into commercial production, um, working with, working with some great production people, learning commercials and how that world works. And if you want to learn production quickly, (laughs) commercials is the way to do it. I would office PA in a second. You learn so much so quickly on commercials. Yeah. How did you get introduced into the commercials? Just people you knew or did? Yeah, I knew someone and she, sent my name out and and things like that. So I just kind of got in with a crew and we just kept on kind of going from commercial to commercial. And then after the commercial world, I (laughs) kind of went over to art department coordinating for a while because a friend of mine who is a set decorator who I met working with Barbara, uh, Bernadette Stewart, 
she's like, I want us to work together again. And mm-hmm. um, so she brought me into that for like a period of time. And her and I got to work together again, which was great. And uh, yeah, so I did a little, so this is why I've worked in like so many different departments, but at the same time, you know, when you think about it as a producer and a director, you understand what all the departments are going through um, and what they're dealing with day to day. Mm-hmm. It's all interesting to me for sure. Yeah. And then uh, you worked on as a production coordinator on Sherry O'Terry's pilot presentation. I mean, she is hilarious. She is. I love her. So how well, did you me too. go there? How did you get that job? Well, funny enough, uh, when I was living in West Hollywood, my my roommate at the time was walking her dog and randomly ran ran into Sherry O'Terry, um, were walking her dog. And they started talking about their dogs and Sherry heard my friend my friend's accent from Philly. And they called me, I was in work and they were like, You're you're never gonna believe who we ran into today. And I'm like who? And she, they were like, Sherry O'Terry. I'm like, yeah, okay. And I hung up the phone and I like went back to work. Uh-huh. Okay. And they were like, they called me back. They're like, no, we're serious. And we just, you know, we winded up developing like this amazing relationship with Sherry. And uh, at the time we were, we were writing about Philly and growing up in South Philly and things like that. And, you know, I kind of said to them, I'm like, what if, you know, what if we wrote a short? And, and Sherry can star in it. We can go back to Philly, maybe raise a little money. And, you know, what do you, what do you all think? And they were like, let's do it. Let's try at least, you know, so we did. And, um, that's how Turkey's done kind of came into fruition. So let's talk about that. So that, is that the first short film that you wrote or co-wrote and directed or? Yes. Okay. And so tell, walk me through. Uh, the collaboration with her? Well, I mean, Sherry is not only hilariously funny on screen, she is hilariously funny in person. So it was always so much fun. And we were laughing hysterically till there were tears. Um, It was, it was really an amazing experience to kind of see her genius come out, you know, to be that funny, obviously on screen, but to just not even try and be funny in real life. She, she, it's effortless for her. Right. And, you know, she's a genius in her own right. Um, just because of that. And she's an amazing writer and, you know, she came on as executive producer and was just from the beginning with this project. So excited, so involved, um, you know, doing anything that she could, she worked really hard and, you know, I hope that everyone could see that on screen. Yeah. Um, where can people see it? Um, it's on Shorts TV right now. So you could check it out there. It was a lot of fun. We we actually raised 30000 through an Indiegogo. And that was, a whole, again, learning things that you never thought that you would have to do. Learning about how to raise money um, to make your own project and how that all worked. I mean, we worked so hard for like a few months to even get that up and running and then spending the month, you know, we all spent hours and hours daily raising that money. If it wasn't for South Philly and where we came from, I mean, everyone was so supportive um, when we were doing that. So, and then when we were shooting, everyone was so supportive. I mean, we had the neighbors, we had, you know, everybody coming in, coming out to donate either their time, uh, food, uh, our production office, it was just like, still to this day, I am amazed, but not amazed from about the people from South Philly because they are extremely generous. And it's the reason why I want to shoot more and more and more there. I want, I want people, uh, you know, across the country and across the world to see, you know, how we live and, and who we are and, and obviously the generous hearts that we have as well. Right. Yeah. And um, did, was it somebody's uh, house that you filmed in? Yes, it was. Uh, I have a good friend back in South Philly who is a real estate agent and property manager. Her name is Marie Rossetti. She's my property manager back in Philly too. She's like, whatever you want, I will make it happen. Whatever you need, just tell me and I'll do it. 
And I actually just saw her when I was back in Philly a few weeks ago. And she's like, when are we doing it again? What, you know, you call yeah. me, whatever you need. So, you know, this is just how people from South Philly are. Yeah. They are, they're something else. Yeah. Yeah. They're very much a community and family. Uh, that's what I got from the film. I thought the film was hilarious. Sherry, Thank you. Sherry stole the show. I mean, Absolutely. she was the best. I was just like, oh my God, these are so great. And I was thinking, God, when you guys were writing it, you were probably laughing the whole time. Like you were saying, like laughing. So like writing it, filming it. I mean, when she stuffed the turkey, I did, I, I was going to be the one that like, you know, we would, they would have to call cut because I'm laughing. I am like literally behind the monitor, like holding my nose, trying not to make any noise. I mean, she just took it and ran. And it's one of my, obviously my favorite parts in the whole movie. So, well, what I loved is when she was on the phone to her friend and the long cord <laughs> for that phone, I was like, oh my God, that's bringing me back to growing up. Yes. Right. I mean, my mom had that cord. It was constantly wrapped around the table, yep. our necks everywhere. So uh, bringing it back to that time period yeah. is like, you know, when we were kids and growing up in the city, Yeah, you know, we wanted to, to kind of bring it back and and show our respect for sure. Right. Yeah. No, no. I thought that was so funny. Um, so well done. I mean, you had a lot of crew. I was like, wow, this is like a feature film. Like we did, you know, the credits are going and going. I was like, wow. We, we had a, an amazing crew. Um, a lot of our friends and obviously family came out and ba basically worked for nothing. Um, just doing a favor to us. And I am still eternally grateful. Uh, I still go back and help on their projects whenever I can to, to basically repay and do whatever I can to, to say thank you still. Because without them, I mean, where would we have been? It was just so many people offered their time and their talent uh, to this film. And I'm, I'm still grateful. Yeah. And, and this is where networking plays in. You know, it's like this is where... Uh, you meet so many people and then you're, you're now connected in high places <laughs> with all the people that, you know, I mean, do you ever like, I just, uh, a side note, do you ever talk to Barbara anymore or no? Like, yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes. We still, we still talk. We do. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, look at how much you've built and, uh, maintain connections. I mean, all you've said is, you know, I feel the Philly coming is everything is like how, uh, you're still talking to people to this day. And I think that's, that's the takeaway of really, if you're wanting to be in the business, you really have to connect and grow relationships. Absolutely. And, and you have you to know, do your best. That yeah, will you have to do your best every yes. single day, every single minute, every single second, you have to bring it. And you have to show yes. everyone around yeah. you, you know, that when I think about working on set or with crews, you know, that you're there for them, you're reliable, you know, and you're going to do your best all day long. Right. To help to get the project done. Yeah. And, yeah. and also be positive. It's one thing. Don't, don't complain. Just do the best you can. And, and, uh, you know, because absolutely. We're all exhausted. Why? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> we're all tired. Um, <laughs> we're all hopped up on a lot of caffeine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, we're all in it together. We we feel it. You know, we've all have been PAs. We've all done those jobs. Uh, we've all worked the long hours, but um, but it does pay off. It, it will pay off if you keep, if you keep at it, it's just not easy. It's, it's not, I don't, you know, and I think we all are not in this business because it's easy. Right. right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. But, yeah. oh God, when, when the project is completed, it's like so rewarding to go. I was a part of that. Yes, it is. It's, it's still, it still amazes me, you know, years later, if I see something that, I was involved with or worked on and it's like, Oh wow. Right. Yes. And then I go back and think about all the work and I'm like, don't think about that. Just think about, it. <laughs> just think about right. that it's finished and it's done and your name is on that. So. Right. And also I always think like 
you know, when I get on set, I'm always thinking, oh, who's going to be there that I know, you know, or, or yes. who's new people that I'm going to get to know that I wouldn't have known other, right. you know, or I've heard right. about, I've heard their names and now I'm finally getting to work with them, you know? Absolutely. I, I love that too. Um, on this last one, I had uh, Wendy, I worked a little with Wendy on this last one and she knew a, a lot of people on this crew. And it's like so exciting when you see someone that you've worked with in the past, you're like, you're on this too. (laughs) It's like, yeah, I mean, we're all in the same business, but you know, there are a lot of projects that are going on at the same time. So it's a lot of fun when you see people, you know, and you get to reconnect and, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So I know that you've uh, been in a lot of roles on set from co-producer, production coordinator, art coordinator, to now writer director. What roles do you prefer to be on set? Uh, I love, you know, being involved, you know, as a producer, as a director, doing some some more writing, uh, which is a whole obviously different process. So again, like learning about all of that, um, still teaching myself things, um, still researching. Um, But yes, I love I love writing a lot. And I love directing and producing because I think producing deep down is, is the multitask that I do enjoy. (laughs) Yes. So, so what are some of the projects that you're working on writing wise? Right now, uh, I just finished with my writing partner, April Doctolero, who's also an amazing actress. Um, We just finished a Christmas feature. I know me and the holidays, right? I don't know where that (laughs) comes from. I do enjoy (laughs) holidays a lot. Um, so we just finished uh, a feature called Lights, Camera, Christmas, and, um, we are working on developing it actually with a film company in Philadelphia, which I'm really Mm -hmm. excited about. Um, and their name is a three left-handed women. So, yeah, so I'm really excited to work with them also with L ride productions also from Philly, um, met them through the Women's Film Festival in Philly, where we had a, an amazing premiere for Turkey's Done uh, through the Women's Film Festival. And any women out there who are finishing up their projects, whether it's a feature, a doc, a, a short, they're actually going to be accepting uh, films in the fall for their, for their film, film festival. These women are amazing. And I just really connected with them. They, they're really there for you know, female filmmakers and, and really pushing for that. So I am, I'm grateful for meeting them. And um, yeah, so that's, that's the next project right now that I'm working on. Are you directing? I hope to. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely wrote it and I will produce it. Um, So yeah, I'd I'd love to direct it and uh, get a feature under my belt. Yeah. I mean, I find it so hard. Um, I'm a writer director too. And I find it so hard to write something and not want to direct it because you probably have the movie in your head. You have it all, all the visions, you could see it happening yeah. all in your, exactly. I agree with you a thousand percent for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I hope you do it. Yeah, me Just too. Step into it. it. Yeah, yeah. I keep you posted on that. Yeah. And um, if you've never been to the Women's Film Festival in Philly, Definitely, maybe check it out. They're amazing women. Yeah. Oh, great. Who run it? Diana Hall, uh, Susie Nash, and Fang Nguyen are amazing. And then from L Ride, L Ride is uh, Wes Hall's company, and I love Wes because he is such an advocate for female filmmakers. And uh, can't thank you know L Ride is a big sponsor of the uh, female film festival, the Women's Film Festival, excuse me, in Philly, and. Um, I'm telling you, we had an amazing premiere. I couldn't, we couldn't ask for any, like, it was like out of a dream. Yeah. Seriously. It it really was. It was at the Kimmel Center in Philly, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous theater. And it was something I'll never forget. I just love these people so much. So definitely check them out on, you know. Yeah, I will. Yeah. We just finished, um, me and, uh, I co-directed and wrote with two other people, but we just finished a short film. So maybe I'll submit that too. Yes, you should. Yeah. That would be yeah. great. Yeah. Put Thanks for word. telling me. I was like, all right, I uh, got to note that. <laughs> yeah. Make a note, make a note, all of our female filmmakers out there for sure. Right. So, you know, yeah. Cause you never know what's going to come of it. You never know who you're going to meet. I mean, 
I had no idea. You know, I just randomly, um, you know, April and I had finished. I'm like, who can I send this out to? I <laughs> right. We're done, you know, finally writing this. We wrote it over the pandemic every day on Zoom. Oh, cool. Um, we Yeah, we had a great time, April and I, writing this. Um, so is April in town or in Philly? April actually is from San Diego. Oh, wow. <laughs> she's from San Diego. She lives in LA now. She's an actress. She's a writer. She's going to, you know, she's a producer. She'll be a producer on this film. We had a blast. I mean, she'll tell you, like, we started out, like, in my pool (laughs) before the pandemic, just kind of coming up with random ideas to write about. And she's like, I'm going to tell everybody this idea started in a pool, okay? I'm like, okay. (laughs) Yeah. And um, every day we were super diligent with getting on Zoom together, writing as many hours as we both could tolerate, (laughs) drink our coffee together eat some snacks and we finished it. We did a table read over zoom during the pandemic. So that was a lot of fun. And then I was like, you know, I'm just randomly going to start sending it out to see, you know, if we can get any interest, I, you know, let's see. So I sent it out to a few people and, and uh, Susie and Fong were really interested. They sent it to Diana and they were like, wow. So here we are. We're developing. So here we go. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. So let me ask you, if you don't mind, um, some questions on the collaboration. So is there one primary writer that does the script or how did you collaborate and write with each other? Like what, what was the process? How do you do it? You know, April and I, I want to say it was, you know, 50, 50, um, she is so amazing at writing and we had a blast, you know, doing it. So she's so amazing too at writing like screen direction and screen description, obviously dialogue too, but I, it's, it's a place where I get stuck, you know, and if, if we just talk about it, she can just see it in her head and she's like, mm-hmm, keep talking, keep talking, just keep saying and then all of a sudden, like, you know, because on final draft, you yeah. can see what's coming up with each other. You could collaborate. And uh, I love final draft, too, by the way. Not that. Yeah, me too. I, am <laughs> I don't too. have any affiliation with them, but love final draft. Um, it's what I write everything on. She, she's like, keep talking, keep going. And I would just tell her what I was seeing in my head. And she's like, is this what you would see? And I'm like, how is that so amazing? <laughs> you know? And then same thing with dialogue. Her and I would just say, you know, do you want to be this character today or you want to be that character? And we would just read it back over and over and over again. So that's how our process works. I don't know how it works for other writers, but it's just kind of something that really worked for us. And I can't say that, you know, it was one had was more than the other. I mean, we I didn't want to make any decisions without her and vice versa. So, you know doing that with her has been like an amazing experience. So how long did it take you to write it from start to finish? Oh dear God. Um, I want to say, Oh, I wish April was here now. (laughs) (laughs) I want to say, I think at the beginning when we started, we didn't have obviously the time that we did during the pandemic Yeah, because we were home every day. We couldn't go anywhere. So we just wrote, but I want to say it was about, from the time we thought we wanted to write till we finished was probably like a year and a half, two years, maybe Mm -hmm. took us a minute. Right. And then we were busy. Yeah. And then when you were writing like on zoom, did you just like do a couple hours every day or how, how often were you meeting? Yes. Yes. So I'm like, you know, at the end of each writing session, I'm like, okay, you know, do we want to meet tomorrow? Do we want to take the day off? It was like very, like, I didn't want it to be me because I am like, let's write. Like, I am like, let's go every single day, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, it's just my personality, but it was a good balance with April. Cause she's like, let's take a day off. (laughs) Let's, let's let it simmer, you know, let's, uh, but, and she's like, Nope, we should, we should definitely write, you know, these days. And I'm like, perfect. You know? So it was like, not too much pressure, but at the same time, like we would get on a roll. So we wanted to, you know, keep on knocking out those pages and we would get excited about, you know, things we were creating and, and what was funny and what's not funny. Cause April is extremely funny. Um, 
she's in a way like Sherry, not even trying to be funny. And you're just like on the floor laughing. Right. So, um, so yeah, it, it was, it was a great process and I love it. And I hope we do more together. Oh yeah. We're thinking about it. So we're, we're, uh, we're, we're kind of busy now with this, with this one film and she's actually on set right now <laughs> shooting. So, um, yeah. No, that's great. I, I'm always curious about collaborations and how they work. I know they're all different, but it's always interesting to take some tidbits from people and how they get it done. It's very interesting. I mean, I love hearing, you know, what others do to collaborate as well and how they get it done. And, you know, you can always take a little, you know, from, from hearing those. I love to hear other people's experiences. Yeah. I, lo- I will ask question <laughs> after question. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's all very interesting to me. Yeah. You know, LA can be very competitive, right? Absolutely. And you have to kind of keep yourself in the know. Um, So working as a producer on a film or really any position on film, once the film is over, the job is over and you can feel a little transitory. Yeah. So you can always have to, you always have to kind of be hustling for the next gig. And I was just wondering, like, what is your strategy in between the lows of Yeah, I, you know, I was just talking with someone about that yesterday. And I've been talking, as I was telling you earlier, more with people who I work with, we kind of never really talked about it before. And for some reason, it kind of came up, you know, and so it made me think about it a little bit more. And it's like, why don't we talk about, you know, that, that time in between where we're like, where's the next gig? Are we? Oh, you know, I should have took those two days on that thing, but I was so tired, you know, I'm still trying to catch up right. from the last one. Um, so, you, you know, for me, it's, it's a little bit of a guilt, you know, if I don't take everything that's coming at me, but at the same time, you know, you need to have that time too to recharge because you're just coming off of those extremely long days. But um, for me, you know, and also not an easy thing, you know, reach out, like I just, I'll just reach out with to people uh, who I like working with. (laughs) And as you get, I think a little bit older, you start to realize that that is really important because you're with these people so long, you know, throughout the day or months at a time. I was talking with, uh, my friend Julia yesterday, who is now a coordinator and she just kind of got into the union and she's like, yeah, she's like, you know, as you go to project to project, (laughs) You know, you want to work with the people who you like and who you, you know, enjoy being around and you, you know, you don't realize that at first because you're just trying to work, you know, and you're trying to build those relationships. Mm -hmm. Yes. And even with directing too, it's like, I'm also reaching out now because I'm trying to shadow and uh, get on set with COVID. It makes it a little bit more difficult, but, you know, to get that experience and, and to shadow and to learn from these directors as much as you can. It's a scary thing reaching out, right? Cause yeah. you don't know, you don't know kind of how people are going to react or, but when I think about it, when people reach out to me for work, I'm like, Oh no, it's good to know. You know, maybe I will be on a project where I will need people. So, you know, you keep mm-hmm. that in the back of your mind to, of if someone was reaching out to you, you know, and, they're looking for work. And if, if I can help you, you know, I will. So, um, so we have to get over ourselves a little bit sometimes and, uh, right. and, and reach out and just say hi, or, Hey, can we have lunch? Or when you're not busy, Hey, what are you working on? Do you know anybody who's working on something who might, you know, need some extra help? So. Well, right. And if you never let people know what you need or what you're about, how is anybody going to help you? <laughs> I mean, how's anyone going to know? How's right. anyone going to know that you want to be a director or you want to be a producer? You know, it's, it's a scary thing. It's, a, it's scary to reach out. And I feel like it never gets easier. <laughs> um, only if we allow it to. So, you know, um, right. Yeah. It's, it's an everyday, I don't want to say an everyday struggle or an everyday battle, but you know, you just have to, also do your best to stay positive and not kind of go into those slumps um, where you're afraid that nothing's going to come around because the work is going to come around. I mean, you know, LA is so busy. New York is so busy, which is a good thing. 
Well, and it's also like you just said, is like, um, go to people that you know, and ask also be a part of like Facebook groups. There's a whole bunch out there. Absolutely. Right? Yes. That too. Yeah. yeah. I was talking, I saw, and here's something too. It's like, I saw a post in a Facebook group for actors, Got it. but it was somebody I knew. And so I reached right. out to her and I said, Hey, do you need any crew? And she said, Oh my God, I, I don't know why I didn't think about you. Yeah. See? So think about that. That's Even if it's not not necessarily post. Now, some people may say, please don't, if it's not this, don't, don't be bugging me. True. True. And they'll be specific, you know, they'll be specific in their posts. Yeah. But, but I guess if you know the person, then go, go ahead and reach out to them. Yeah. And just know. reach out. Be like, right. Hey, how can I help? You right. know? But you never yeah. know because I've also had, Oh, we already hired everybody for that, but let me keep you in mind. What do you do? Can you send me your resume, you know, or send me some stuff. So again, if you don't ask, you're never going to get anything, but you have to ask. You're never going to know. And, and yeah, it's funny, you know, you mentioned, you know, these Facebook pages because I've hired PAs, you know, by posting. Cause if you're in a, you know, in a random place in the country and you're shooting and it's not LA or New York where there's like a plethora of PAs or a plethora of crew, you know, these Facebook pages really come in handy. So absolutely. I'm on a few myself, you know, just always like looking to see what's going on or people have a question. I mean, I find them interesting, you know, um, to see what other filmmakers are going through. And right. Yeah. It's like, okay. We're all going through the same thing, you know? So yeah, Facebook pages. Um, and I tell people who I work with who are always looking for work, you know, Hey, become friends with me. Sometimes I post that, you know, jobs that I see or Friends reach out to me and say, hey, Mo, can you, you know, put this on your story? I'm looking for so-and-so. Sure, absolutely. You know, if I can help my friend and someone who also I worked with who I like. Right, yeah. Why not? Why yeah, not I mean, there's them, just a wealth you know? of opportunities out there. I think, it, like you just uh, said in the beginning, is really, it's hustle. You have to hustle, work hard. I mean, if you're hustling, I know this one, I have a friend, Rachel Hastings. She's a DP. She goes from San Diego to LA back and forth. She is always on something, but it's because she hustles. She's a hustler. She's always connecting and putting herself out there on multiple projects. And she's amazing. She's amazing DP and gaffer grip. She's just amazing. And I'm just like, Love that. that's the model. Yes. That's the model to be. Yeah. Is and then she's and she's really good at social social media by always posting pictures on set. Right. You know, giving kudos to other people. She's so good about that. I, I really admire that. And it sounds like you're the same. I do. I do my best. Yeah. I mean, when I have friends who I know who work on projects, listen, I know what they're going through. You know, it's we have to be there for each other. It's it's a lot, you know. And if a few people watch their projects because I posted it, hey. You never know. It, it, we have to hold each other up. This is really hard. It's hard for women, especially. Yeah. And we're we're still doing our best to you know climb and and get our names out there. And um, it's it's what we can do, you know, to, to help each other. And and then hopefully too, when you have a project, other friends will do it for you too. So you know, it all comes full circle, you know, one way or another. I I love posting you know, projects that I love and, you know, see my friends out there and, and proud of them. For, Cause I, again, I know what they're going through. It's, it's not easy. Yeah. And again, you're learning like same thing with like social media, right. And then posting, it's like, okay, we have to become like, you know, social media influencers now too, because we got to get our work right. out there. So you need to learn about that, you know, yeah. as well. Uh, so this business is literally all encompassing. I mean, it's not just learning one specific thing it's learning a lot yeah about a lot of different things i yeah. i agree well thank you so much for being on the show today this was great thank you so much for having me this was so much fun thank you so much for listening i encourage you to get out there and make a film reach out to your local filmmakers group to get involved and connect please subscribe to the show if you like it and follow me on instagram at tammy mcgarrow until we meet again What's your story?